Today we are doing something a little bit different. We are comparing two Lenovo's gaming laptops from their Legion line, the Y720 and the Y520. Which of them is better for you? Stick around, find out. First off, let's talk about technical specifications. The Legion Y710 supplied to us came with the Intel Core i7-7700HQ, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 6GB version, 60GB of DDR4 RAM, 128GB of, of PCIe SSD storage and 1TB hard drive. It came with the Full HD IPS 15.6 inch monitor and the standard connectivity options of dual band Wi-Fi 802AC, Bluetooth 4.0, a gigabit Ethernet, three USB 3.0 ports, one HDMI port, one Thunderbolt USB Type-C port, microphone and audio jack, and of course DisplayPort. While the Legion Y520 that came supplied to us came with the same processor, the 7700HQ, 16GB of DDR4 memory, 256GB PCIe SSD and 1TB HDD drive, a GTX 1050Ti with 4GB of GDDR4 and the same 15.6 inch Full HD IPS panel display. The aforementioned is joined with two 2 watt Harman certified speakers with Dolby Audio, one single band AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4, one USB Type-C connector, two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2 port, one HDMI, audio microphone jacks, gigabit Ethernet connection and the SD card slot reader. So it's safe to say that both of the laptops came to us with pretty similar specs and most of the differing points will be with our experience of use, so the keyboard, the monitor, the build quality. In line with that, as the Legion Y710 is the premium version, so the higher priced model, it should have better build quality and in fact it does. It has this nice aluminium covered monitor, the anti-slip rubber padding on the surface that comes in contact with our hands. Another point of contention are the speakers. On the Y720 they are two 2 watt speakers and one 3 watt subwoofer that supports Dolby Atmos, while on the Y520 they are two 2 watt speakers. In reality, they both sound great when compared to other laptops, certainly above market average. But I would say that the Y720 with that special subwoofer punches a bit more bass and therefore the music and games played back sound just a tiny bit more realistic and close to you, but your experience may vary. The monitors appear very similar in their make and quality. They are both decent IPS Full HD panels that have nice viewing angles, respond beautifully and don't feature any noticeable ghosting. I would wish they would include 120Hz panels inside their products but I understand that these are still more aggressively priced laptops and as such they have to skimp out somewhere. While the monitors are similar, the hinge that supports them is most definitely not. On the Y720 the hinge was wobbly and the monitor when typing furiously as I often do wobbled and that is something I cannot take lightheartedly on a product that potentially costs upwards of 1000 euros. On the Y720 the hinge is as stiff as it has to be, maybe that's just a problem of my review unit and, and other esteemed journalists being a bit too rough on the product, but still I can judge what I get into my hands, not something that should have been better. The keyboards on the other hand are great. Lenovo has always been the top dog as far as I'm concerned when it comes to typing performance and both of the products on review today are no different. They have nice tactile feedback, so a nice bump and still they don't feel wobbly, mushy, but then we go downstairs and we see the trackpad. My primary laptops have been Lenovo's since 2010 and since then I've tried a fair amount of Lenovo laptops. Not one of them had a perfect trackpad and by perfect I don't mean anything special, I just mean that I don't want it to glitch out. Sometimes it won't work, sometimes the buttons won't press, sometimes the double click won't work as intended. Oftentimes I get the feeling that the trackpad software is from like 2005 and just wasn't updated with Windows as the hardware itself doesn't feel bad, the clicks are tactile, they have a nice response but the software side is the problem as it just glitches out. But I have to say that that isn't something that happens every hour or every day. Let's say it happens once per week. If you're doing some mission critical work such as uh, Photoshop or whatnot, yes it isn't best to use a trackpad but still if you do it'll glitch out and well you will have some uh, control Z typing to do. Well good thing the keyboard always works. 
These days the usability and the additional features that improve the value for the potential customers are the things that are the most important when it comes to laptops. As almost every laptop manufacturer these days has a product in this 1000 to 1500 gaming segment that has strong graphics so the 1050 Ti or the 1060 16GB of RAM, a full HD panel and a 7700 HQ. But still this is a review so we have to talk about performance somewhat. Starting with the Y520, we got just shy of 13,000 points in Geekbench 3, 60 FPS in Hitman on Full HD Ultra settings, 31 average in Metro Last Light with high settings, a Tomb Raider we got on very high 46 FPS, and in 3D Mark Firestrike we got 6771, and that is a score we're pretty satisfied with. Yes, it could be better, but then again, it's a budget performance gaming laptop if there's such a thing. Y7200 on the other hand was a tiny bit better, with just over 14k in Geekbench 3, 65 FPS in Hitman, and 36 in Metro Last Light, while in Rise of the Tomb Raider on very high, the same as before, we got 51 FPS average. 3D Mark Firestrike was also a bit better due to the higher performing graphics cards, the 1060, that was just shy of 7000. Battery life on the other hand was pretty underwhelming. On the Y520 with 3 hours and 39 minutes with, with continuous web surfing, not hardcore performance or gaming or whatnot. On the Y720, the battery life was 3 hours and 10 minutes due to it having the same, and I do mean identical, battery. Hard drive speeds on the other hand weren't anything to write home about, given this is a PCIe SSD and it fits into the M.2 slot, we thought that it was running on M.2 and we would get like 1000 plus, given that we got 363 megabytes per second write speeds. Well, it's a SATA drive, and the drive performance is the same in the Y720. All in all, the results of the Y720 versus the Y520 battle are inconclusive. If you need a high performing graphics card, so a 1060 or better, then do go for the 720, but if not, I personally would always go for the 520 due to it being much lighter, much thinner, much more portable and still high performing. Thanks for watching this comparative review on Discharge Networks, thumbs up if you liked this type of video from us and would want to see more of them in the future. Don't forget to subscribe!